Amén, hermanos, así hemos dado la lectura de la palabra de Dios y de igual manera lo vamos a leer en inglés. Dejamos el tiempo a nuestro hermano Denis para que viene a dar la lectura de la palabra. Welcome, buenos días, bienvenidos. Uh, yeah. uh, so our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 18. Maybe I want to say one thing. A number of times in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am... I am the door, I am the good shepherd, I am the bread of life. And the I am comes from the Old Testament, from the word, maybe I don't want to steal from Jim what Jim's going to say and, and Samuel. Um, the, the word, uh, the name of God, which in the Spanish Old Testament is Jehová, In English, Old Testament is Lord in capital letters, uh, is, is Jehovah, is Yahweh, and it means I am. So when Jesus says, yo soy, yo soy, he's saying, he's the Lord. It's the name of the Lord. And so let us listen to the word of God, the word of the Lord. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus said again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to kill, to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd does not who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge have I received from my Father. May the Lord bless to us the reading of his holy word, and to his name be glory and praise. Almighty God, your word, your word is a sword that goes into our hearts. But Lord, you are, your word, by your word, you enter our hearts, and you give us life and give us abundance. Live us, you give us a, an abundant life in your spirit. Because when you enter our heart, 
when your sword pierces and you come in, you make us new. You set us free from our sins. You set us free from the power of death. You set us free from the fears and the evils of this world. You give us a new life. Give us a new life. Give us a new life this morning through your word, through the preaching, through the message that Jim shares with us. We pray that you'll bless his study and his prayer and his speaking and his, his motivating us by the power of your Holy Spirit so that we may have you pierce our hearts and enter our hearts and give us new life. Help us to know you, hear your voice, to know your voice, to know you as a good shepherd. Help us know that you are our shepherd and you are good and you have laid down your life for us to give us abundant life. Lord, help us to receive you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Bien, hermanos, así hemos dado la lectura de la palabra y hemos orado con el hermano Denis. Y de este momento vamos a dejar el tiempo a, de mensaje, tiempo a nuestro hermano Pastor Samuel y a nuestro hermano Pastor Jim. So now it's time for a message. So that time is by our brother, our pastor Jim, and to our pastor Samuel. Tiempo para los hermanos pastores. Our message this morning is the Lord is my shepherd. El tema de nuestro mensaje hoy, el Señor es mi pastor. In the Old Testament, David wrote Psalm 23, where he calls the Lord God Almighty his shepherd. David was very familiar with the work of a shepherd. En el Antiguo Testamento, David escribió el Salmos 23, donde llama al Señor Dios Todopoderoso, su pastor. David estaba muy familiarizado con el trabajo de un pastor. His father had given him responsibility of looking after the flock of sheep. Su padre le había dado la responsabilidad de cuidar el rebaño de ovejas. A shepherd has a staff and leads his sheep to go out into the open fields to feed them. Un pastor tiene una barra y lleva a sus ovejas a salir al campo abierto para alimentarlos. Day and night he is with them. He protects them from all the wild animals. El día y noche está con ellos y los protege de animales salvajes y fieras. He also walks with them along the path everywhere they go. Él también camina con ellos a lo largo del camino donde quiera que vayan. At night they go to a safe place to sleep. It is often a sheep pen made of stone walls with an entrance doorway. Por la noche van a un lugar seguro para dormir. A menudo es un corral de ovejas hecho de paredes de piedra. Con un portal de entrada. He knows his sheep and they know him. Él conoce a sus ovejas y ellos lo conocen a él. They follow him and he leads them to water, to pasture, and to pasture where there, there is grass to eat. Lo siguen a él y él los lleva al agua y los lleva a pastos verdes para comer. Familiar Psalm 23. Let's, this, let's hear the word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Esto es lo que David escribió en Salmos uh, 23, versículo 1 al 3. Escuchemos la palabra de Dios. Jehová es mi pastor, nada me faltará. En lugares de delicados pastos me hará descansar. Junto a aguas de reposo me pastoreará, confortará mi alma, me guiará por sendas de justicia, por amor de su nombre. David knew that Yahweh was his shepherd. The Lord looked, down, looked after him. He provided his food and shelter. David sabía que Jehová era su pastor. El Señor le cuidó y le guardó, le proporcionó comida y refugio. He provided the good things he needed to eat and water to drink. Jehová proporcionó cosas buenas para David que necesitaba para comer y agua para beber. Yahweh was like a shepherd to care for him who cared for him, always looking after his life. Jehová fue como un pastor para David, que siempre cuidaba de él, guardando su vida. In verse 3, David continues and says, He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. En el versículo 3 del Salmo 23, David continúa así, Me guardará por sendas de justicia, por amor de su nombre. David was aware that the Lord God was leading him in a way to teach him to live righteously. He was teaching him to obey the righteous demands of God's law written in his word. David era consciente de que el Señor Dios le estaba guiando de una manera para enseñar a vivir rectamente. Dios le estaba enseñando a obedecer a las justas demandas de la ley de Dios escritas en su palabra. Verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. En el versículo 4 del Salmo 23 dice, Aunque ande en valle de sombra de muerte, no temeré mal alguno, porque tú estarás conmigo. Tu vara y tu callado me infundirán aliento. David had many enemies, but he knew that his God was with him wherever he went. David tenía muchos enemigos. Pero sabía que su Dios estaba con él donde quiera que él iba. Even if his enemies were surrounding him and death was near in battle, or from Saul who sought his life, he knew that Yahweh was there and he did not fear death. Aunque sus enemigos lo rodeaban y la muerte estaba cerca en la batalla, o de Saúl que buscaba su vida, David sabía que Jehová estaba allí y no tenía y no temía a la muerte. He was comforted like a shepherd uses his staff to keep the sheep in the flock. The Lord was directing his life to keep him safe and cared care for him. David se sintió consolado porque Así como un pastor usa su vara para mantener a las ovejas en el rebaño, así el Señor estaba dirigiendo su vida para mantenerlo seguro y guardarlo. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. El versículo 5 dice, aderezas mesas delante de mí en presencia de mis angustiadores. Unges mi cabeza con aceite. Mi copa está rebosando. David could remember when Samuel, God's prophet, came to his home. And he was called to come and join his father and brothers in a feast. David podía recordar cuando Samuel, el profeta de Dios, llegó a su casa y lo llamaron para que viniera y se uniera a su padre 
y hermanos en un banquete. Yahweh has prepared a feast for him in the presence of his enemies, and he was chosen to be king when Samuel anointed him with oil. His cup truly overflows with God's blessing and provision. Jehová le ha preparado un banquete en la presencia de sus enemigos, y fue escogido para ser rey. Cuando Samuel lo ungió con aceite, su copa verdaderamente reposó con la provisión de Dios. Verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. El versículo 6 dice, Ciertamente el bien y la misericordia me seguirán todos los días de mi vida, y en la casa de Jehová moraré por largos días. No matter where he goes, even if his life is short or long, the Lord is with him, and he pours out his goodness to him. No importa a donde él vaya, y aunque su vida sea corta o larga, el Señor estaba con David y derramaba su bondad sobre él. He is merciful to him, and he will be allowed to dwell in the presence in his house forever. Jehová es misericordioso con él, y se le permitirá morar en la casa de Jehová por largos días. In John 10, 1 to 18, Jesus surprisingly spoke to the Jews about himself in words that described himself in the same kind of relationship of a shepherd with his sheep. En Juan 10, 1 al 18, Jesús sorprendentemente les habló a los judíos acerca de sí mismo en palabras que lo describían en el mismo tipo de relación de un pastor con sus ovejas. I think the Jews would have recognized that Jesus was saying he was like Yahweh with his people. But many of the things that Jesus said about himself would be very shocking to the Jews. Los judíos, uh, los judíos habrían reconocido que Jesús estaba diciendo que él era como Jehová con su pueblo. Pero muchas de las cosas que Jesús dijo acerca de sí mismo sería muy impactante para los judíos. Jesus begins like this saying in John 10, 1, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. And he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So to him, the sheep, the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. And when he has brought them out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him and they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from a stranger. They, will do, they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. Jesús comenzó a decir uh, así en Juan 10, 1 al 6. De cierto, de cierto os digo, el que no entra por la puerta en el redil de las ovejas, sino que sube por otra parte, ese es ladrón y salteador. Mas el que entra por la puerta, el pastor de las ovejas es. A este abre el portero, y las ovejas oyen su voz. Y a sus ovejas llama por nombre y las saca. Y cuando ha sacado fuera todas las propias, va delante de ellas y las ovejas le siguen, porque conocen su voz. Mas al extraño no seguirán, sino huirán de él, porque no conocen la voz de los extraños. Esta alegoría les, les dijo Jesús, pero ellos no entendieron qué era lo que les decía. He begins by talking about those who enter to where the sheep dwell. 
the place where the sheep rest in the sheepfold, the pen that the sheep often sleep in at night. Jesús comienza hablando de los que entran donde moran las ovejas, el, reli, el redil, el lugar donde descansan las ovejas, el corral en el que las ovejas suelen dormir por la noche. He says that the thieves come, and when they come, they steal sheep. Él dijo que vienen ladrones, y cuando vienen, a robar ovejas. They often climb over the wall. They do not come in through the doorway. Ellos a menudo entran subiendo por encima de la pared. No entran por la puerta. He compares the shepherd to the thief and says that the shepherd comes into the sheepfold by the door. When he comes to the door, the gatekeeper opens the door and lets both the shepherd and the sheep in through the door. Jesús compara al pastor con el ladrón y dice que el pastor entra al redil por la puerta. Cuando llega a la puerta, el portero abre la puerta y deja tanto el pastor como sus ovejas entrar por la puerta. Jesus then describes the close relationship between the shepherd and his sheep. Jesús entonces describe la estrecha relación entre el pastor y sus ovejas. He knows each one of them. He calls each of them by their name, a name that he has given to them. Él conoce a cada uno de ellos. Él llama a cada uno de ellos por su nombre, un nombre que él les ha dado. Whenever he leads them out, he calls them and they follow him. Cada vez que los saca, los llama, y ellos los siguen. The sheep belong to the shepherd, and they know his voice, and they follow him, and they do not follow strangers. Las ovejas pertenecen al pastor, y conocen su voz, y lo siguen. No siguen a los extraños. Jesus then begins an unexpected change in his teaching and begins to talk about himself. Entonces Jesús comienza un cambio inesperado en su enseñanza y comienza a hablar de sí mismo. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door to the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. En el versículo 7 al 10, Jesús comienza a decir... Volvió, pues, Jesús a decirles, De cierto, de cierto os digo, yo soy la puerta de las ovejas. Todos los que antes de mí vinieron, ladrones son y salteadores, pero no los oyeron las ovejas. Yo soy la puerta, el que por mí entrare será salvo, y entrará, y saldrá, y hallará pastos. El ladrón no viene sino para hurtar, y matar, y destruir. Yo he venido para que tengan vida y para que la tengan en abundancia. When Jesus begins to say that he is the door, he has turned to talk about the kingdom of God. Suddenly he is the door that people must enter. But he still does it in a way as if he is still talking about a shepherd and his sheep. Cuando Jesús comienza a decir que Él es la puerta, de repente comienza a hablar del reino de Dios. Él es la puerta por la que la gente debe entrar, pero lo sigue haciendo como si todavía estuviera hablando de un pastor y sus ovejas. But when he says, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved, he is clearly calling his people sheep. Pero cuando dice que el que por mí entrare, 
será salvo, claramente está llamando a las personas sus ovejas. Those who come to him as the door will now be saved. And just as he has already spoken about a shepherd, not those who enter, those who enter by him are cared for and go in and out and find pasture. Los que acuden a él, como él es la puerta del redil, ahora serán salvos. Los que por él entran son cuidados y entran y salen a buscar pastos. Then he compares himself to the thief. The thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy, but Jesus came to give people life and life abundantly. Luego se compara a sí mismo con el ladrón. El ladrón viene a hurtar, matar y destruir, pero Jesús vino a dar vida a la gente y vida en abundancia. The next section, Jesus switches and combines the door into being the good shepherd. He uses the name of Yahweh and applies it to himself. En la siguiente sección, Jesús cambia y combina la puerta del redil para ser el buen pastor. También usan los nombres de Jehová y se los aplica a sí mismo. The Yahweh, the name of God, which means the great I am, with an emphatic ego emi, I am the good shepherd. Jehová significa el gran yo soy, el nombre de Dios, con un enfático ego emi, soy yo el buen pastor. In verse 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand is not a, a shepherd. Who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. En el versículo 11 al 13, Jesús dice, Yo soy el buen pastor. El buen pastor su vida da por las ovejas, mas el asalariado y que no es el pastor, de quien no son propias las ovejas, ve venir al lobo y deja las ovejas y huye, y el lobo arrebata las ovejas y las dispersa. Así que el asalariado huye porque es asalariado, y no le importa las ovejas. The picture is familiar. A hired worker sees danger and he runs away. He does not really care about the sheep. They don't belong to him, so why should he risk his life if a wolf comes to kill sheep and drag it away? La imagen es familiar. Un trabajador contratado ve, ve venir ve el peligro y huye. A él realmente no le importan las ovejas. No le pertenece. Entonces, ¿por qué debería arriesgar su vida si un lobo viene a matar una oveja o a arrastrarla? Jesus is not like a hired worker. He is the good shepherd. <laughs> He has come to lay down his life for his sheep. Jesús no es como un trabajador contratado. Él es el buen pastor. Ha venido a dar su vida por sus ovejas. Jesus next combines the teaching about the shepherd and his teaching about himself, the good shepherd, Now it is Jesus who is like Yahweh, his father. And Jesus is looking after the flock and has a relationship with each of his sheep. A continuación, Jesús combina sus enseñanzas sobre el pastor y su enseñanza sobre sí mismo, el buen pastor. Ahora es Jesús quien es como Jehová, su padre, y Jesús está cuidando el rebaño 
y tiene una relación con cada uno de sus ovejas. Jesus came to give his life and die on the cross. Jesús vino para dar su vida y morir en la cruz. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that were, are not of this fold, I must bring them also, and they will also will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. En el versículo 14 al 16, Jesús dice, Yo soy el buen pastor, y conozco mis ovejas, y las mías me conocen. Así como el Padre me conoce, y yo conozco al Padre, y pongo mi vida por las ovejas, también tengo otras ovejas que no son de este redil. Aquellas también debo traer, y oirán mi voz, y habrá un rebaño y un pastor. Jesus is the good shepherd and knows each of his sheep and they know him, they follow him. He gives them eternal life and he lays down his life for the sheep. Jesús es el buen pastor que conoce a cada uno de las ovejas y ellas lo conocen a él. Ahora lo siguen. Él les da vida eterna y da su vida por las ovejas. Jesus even pauses to look to the future when others will put their faith in him. They too will be part of the same flock of sheep. Incluso hace una pausa para mirar hacia el futuro. Cuando otros depositen su fe en él, ellos también serán parte del mismo rebaño de ovejas. So much of the gospel, the good news, is included in this passage. Mucho del evangelio está incluido en este pasaje. Jesus is our good shepherd. He came that we might have faith in him and enter the sheepfold of God's people. Jesús, nuestro buen pastor, vino para que tengamos fe en él y entremos en el redil del pueblo de Dios. Through Jesus, we enter the kingdom of God. Por medio de él entramos en el reino de Dios. We hear his words. And we follow him, and he leads us along life's pathway. Oímos sus palabras, lo seguimos, y él nos conduce por el camino de la vida. He came to give his life to purchase our lives by the, his own blood. Él vino a dar su vida para comprar nuestras vidas como si fueran suyas con su sangre. And he owns his, the sheep, God's people, in the kingdom of God. He owns our lives. Él es dueño de las ovejas, el pueblo de Dios, en el reino de Dios. Él, a Él le pertenece nuestra vida. He leads us, and we will someday eat with Him in the kingdom of God at the wedding feast of the Lamb. Él nos guía, y algún día comeremos con Él en el reino de Dios. En las bodas del Cordero. Verse 17. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that, they may, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. En el versículo 17 al 18, Jesús dice, Por eso me ama el Padre, porque yo pongo mi vida para volverla a tomar. Nadie me la quita, sino que yo de mí mismo la pongo. Tengo poder para ponerla, y tengo poder para volverla a tomar. Este mandamiento recibí de mi Padre. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He Dios, does not come into condemnation but has passed from death to life. 
Dios ama tanto al mundo, de tal manera Él amó al mundo, que ha dado a su Hijo unigénito, para que todo aquel que en Él cree no se pierda, mas tenga vida eterna. We, God's people, are called to be like our good shepherd. So, so, what, so what does this have to do with Pastor Appreciation Sunday? Todos estamos llamados a ser como el buen pastor. Entonces, ¿qué tiene que ver esto con el día de pastor este domingo? Pastors and elders, overseers, they are all called to be shepherds and to look after the flock of God's people. El pastor y los ancianos están todos llamados a ser buenos ministros y cuidar del rebaño del pueblo de Dios. We all have one good shepherd, Jesus. Todos tenemos un buen pastor que es Cristo. He is our door to enter the sheepfold of God. Él es nuestra puerta para entrar en el redil de Dios. Through him we enter the kingdom of God. Por medio de él entramos en el reino de Dios. We normally think of the pastor and elders as those entrusted to look after the sheep. But I would like to encourage us all this morning to remember we are all to be like Jesus. Normalmente pensamos en el pastor y los ancianos como los encargados de cuidar de las ovejas. Pero me gustaría animarlos a todos esta mañana a recordar que todos debemos ser como Jesús. So how can we all be like Jesus? We can seek the lost, those who go astray. ¿Cómo podemos llegar a ser como Jesús? Todos podemos buscar a los perdidos y a los descariados. We can bind up the wounded. Nosotros podemos vendar a los heridos. We can help the sick to come to the healer as we pray for them. Podemos ayudar a los enfermos de espíritu a venir al sanador por medio de nuestras oraciones. We can help the weak and those in need. Podemos ayudar a los débiles y a aquellos necesitados. And we can help feed the sheep as the Holy Spirit gives us words to say to teach others. Podemos alimentar a las ovejas por medio de las escrituras con la ayuda del Espíritu Santo que nos da las palabras para expresar y enseñar a otros. That is why to carry out the ministry of Jesus in this world, it takes the whole body of Christ. Por eso, para llevar a cabo el ministerio de Jesús en este mundo, se necesita todo el cuerpo de Cristo, su iglesia. The Lord bless our sermon and his word to each of us this morning. Let's pray. Palabra de Dios, oramos. Gracious Heavenly Father, we bow our hearts in your presence. Father, we ask and we pray as your sheep, looking to you, teach us to be like our Lord Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Teach us to understand his words and to have true understanding of how we can be obedient sheep who hear your voice, obey your words, and follow you in all ways and all times in our lives. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would guide us and protect us according to your power you have purchased as your own. And we praise you, for you have called us by name. You know us personally, each one of us, the sheep of your pasture, of your, lo your fold. And Father, we praise you as being the one who opens the door that we might all come in as Jesus will return to receive us and we, we come to you and we come to join in that great feast of the wedding feast of the Lamb. 
We thank you, Lord, and we give praise this morning as we worship and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.